Now let's go ahead and look at mic placement. The placement of a microphone is supremely important. There are some instruments that require a little less care uh, than others, but the general rule of thumb is that you need to get in pretty close. Waking up, breaking up. Run into the set of sun. That's really the first rule of mic placement. The further you are from that source, the more you introduce the environment in, which will start just making it uh, kind of cheap. Listen to this example from a, a distance. Waking up, breaking up. Run into the set of sun. Freaking out, rocking out. You can hide, you cannot run. Did you hear how the sound of the room really starts to become uh, apparent? I've been saying all along that we want to isolate the sound uh, source because it's a lot easier to add some reverb than to take it away. You have an effects knob on your recorder that you can add effects, but I've yet to see a knob label take away reverb. Let's hear it uh, close in. Waking up, breaking up. So obviously get in close. Also experimenting with mic position changes the overall tone of the instrument and being recorded. Take an example here where we have an acoustic guitar. Did you hear how the sound changes as we move along the string? One of my favorite um, positions is around the 12th fret, about a foot away. But I think we need to spend most of our time on the star of our mix, and that is the vocal. So we'll really drill down here because of the most asked question I get. How do you get a great vocal sound? Well, firstly, get a decent mic. But as I said with these examples in the companion DVD, all are done with mics that cost under 250 bucks. But next, make sure you have nice cables. I would re recommend Megami cables or maybe Monster cables. And if you only have one vocal mic, I'd recommend splurging at least around 50 bucks because this may be your weakest link. If you only have one mic, then get a decent mic cable. Okay, so let's get real with micing a vocal. So now you have a decent mic and a cable, but next we need to isolate it from the ground and other factors. So you need to get an isolation mount uh, like this that suspends the mics from the footsteps and vibrations that come up through the mic stand. Now I would also recommend placing it upside down for the following uh, reason. Have you ever seen, uh, even ever noticed that mics in studios are often placed upside down this way? Well here's the reason. If you place your hand in front of you like this and you say some P's and B's, right? Can you feel those plosives on the hand? That's a lot of air pressure that will bottom out the diaphragm of that mic. Now with the shape of your teeth and the roof of your mouth, these plosives, the P's, B's, T's and K's, tend to move out at a slightly downward motion. And if the body of your microphone is down here, then it's going to start rocking that microphone around. We've been isolating it from the mic stand, but your, with the, these plosives will jolt your mic around. Now if you turn that around, the capsule of that microphone is in the same place, but you don't have any problems. Peace, 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 like that. You can't feel them there. So if you place it at about lip height, about three to eight inches away from your mouth, depending on how loud your singer is, I'd also recommend getting a pop filter to reduce the effect of any plosive that might, uh, uh, might come through that microphone. Uh, place it about halfway between you and the mic. And if you can't spring the 30 so bucks for a, a pop filter, you can always do a MacGyver and make one out of a coat hanger uh, and a stocking. Now, one more thing to consider is this. Any mic with a cardioid pickup pattern, what, that is one that re rejects sound coming from the back, will naturally have the proximity effect. And that is, the closer you are to the microphone, the more low end or bass it will reproduce. Keep that in mind when you are getting in close. You'll need to train your vocalist to kind of keep the same distance to that microphone uh, so that, or else that low end would really ramp up as he or she moves back and forth from that. Obviously the exception is when you do that diva move and you pull back there that we talked about there. But unless you're moving back to protect your recordings, from a big note, try to stay at an even distance from that microphone uh, during your performance. Um, go ahead and check out this video. Actually, before I say that, this microphone ain't even plugged in. This is a, this is a prop, okay? <laughs> I'm actually speaking into a, a shotgun mic here. So anything you're hearing 
about me with plosives and things like that. It's not even coming to this microphone. Shotgun microphone is used in production, which allows it to really reject everything except what's coming uh, from my mouth, mouth here. Anyway, that being said, check out this video.